All right, let's continue by starting importing some reference plans, sections and elevations. I found these images online and they turn out to be quite precise. Let's first create some layers to put them in. Click on the new layer button and let's rename this layer to picture frame. Now create three sub layers and name them plans, sections and elevations. Now within plans, create 8 new sublayers and rename them 00 to 08. This is because we have 9 levels, so 9 picture frames representing our floor plan. Now let's make our 00 layer the current layer, as we're going to start importing our ground floor first. Simply type in picture frame to start a command, or go to the menu under surface, plane, picture frame, to start importing our images. The familiar file explorer window will pop up, so let's browse to our images. They're located in the assets folder in the picture frames directory. Let's select the ground floor as our image and click on open to start drawing our picture frame. Let's use the 00 as our start point. Don't worry about the size of the image, we'll scale it in just a bit. Now if you look closely to the image, you'll see a ruler in the bottom for, for the scale. The first number is 1 meter and the second is 5. Let's use the 5 meter mark as a reference of scaling. Let's start by drawing a line with a length of 5 units starting from the beginning of the ruler. Now we select our picture frame and we scale it using the reference line to its appropriate scale. And that's it. The same proge procedure is used for the other floor plans, the sections and the elevations. I already set up a scene with the picture frames in them, in their appropriate layer, as this is a repetitive process and I don't want to bore you to death so early in this course. This brings us to another minor issue we have. A picture frame is basically nothing more than a surface with a texture linked to it. The problem is that if you open my scene, the links to the images are broken. This makes sense, as they're pointing to the file path on my laptop. Now there are two ways to go about this and to fix the broken links. We'll start with the first one, and that is to manually set the file path to the correct location. If you select a picture frame, go to your properties tab, click on the material tab. Under the textures tab, you'll see an image file name under color. In our case, it says groundfloorplan.png. Now click on the file name and another window will open. In the middle of this window, it says file name and underneath it says the file path we need to change in order to link to the correct location on your laptop or PC. Simply click on the box next to the file path and your file explorer window will, will open. Browse to the assets folder included in this course and to the folder named picture frames. Simply open this folder and click open as the name of the file is, is the same, just the location is different. So that's it. Now the annoying thing is, we'd have to do this for the rest of the picture frames as well. I was annoyed by doing this, so I wrote a small script that automatically assigns the correct location to your picture frames. Which brings us to the second method, using the provided script from the script folder from your assets. The script works pretty straightforward, as you will see in a second. Type in edit python script in your command prompt to open your python script editor. Here you can start writing scripts in the Python programming language. Pretty cool, right? We're not going to dive into this right now. We're going to load our script to update the location to our picture frames. Go to File, Open and browse to the Scripts folder from your assets. Now select the picture frame DearChanger.py script and click on Open. It takes a couple of seconds to load. Alright, now simply click on the big play button to run the script. If you have done that, the window will automatically minimize and it asks us to select our picture frames. 
Now make sure all of the picture frames layer are turned on and unlocked. And select all of them and press enter afterwards. Now a file explorer window will open and it asks us where to select the folder with our picture frames. Browse to your picture frame directory in your assets folder and click OK. Now the Python window will open again as the script finished running. Let's close it and zoom into our scene to see what happened. As you can see all our picture frames got nicely linked to the right location. This saved us some time many linking them individually. Now here's the catch. There exists a bug in Rhino that doesn't save the file location of the picture frames if you save your document. So if you save and close this file and open it up again the other day, you'd have to run the script again to update the links. Now the funny thing is, if you manually set the location like we did before, it will save the location. The downside is, you have to manually set them. So either take 2 seconds to run the script every time you open the file, or bite the bullet and manually set them once, so the choice is yours. Alright, let's continue setting up our construction grid. Let's create a new layer first, and let's call it grid, and let's give it a dark blue color. Now let's make this layer our current one, and let's switch only the ground floor picture frame on, and the rest off. Ah yes, make sure the picture frame layer is locked, so we don't accidentally move any of them. It's a little hard to see the structural grid in this building, but let's base it upon the columns on the top left corner of the building. Let's start with the horizontal lines. Let's draw a line that starts in the center of the column and draw it generously bigger than the building. Now turn on its control points and move the end that is in the center of the column to the other side, also generously bigger than the building. Alright, cool. Now let's use the array command to create the other layers. Execute the array command and let's select our just drawn line. Now set the number in the x-direction to 1, the number in the y-direction to 20, and finally the number in the z-direction also to 1. Now it's time to define our spacing. Pick the center of our previous column we used to start our initial line, and pick the other center of the column below it to define our spacing. As soon as you pick the center of the column, a nice preview got drawn. Click again to place the array. Nice! So we're going to repeat the same procedure for the lines in the vertical direction. Let's use the same column as we used before and draw a line vertically generously bigger than the building. Now turn on its control points and move the initial start point outside the building as well. Let's execute the array command again, pick our line, and set the, this time just set the number of copies in the x direction to 20. The number in the y direction to 1, as well as the number in the z direction. Alright, so the right spacing for the x direction using the center of the columns. and click to place the array again. Now there are some vertical grid lines missing on the left side. Simply select three lines, execute the copy command, and pick the center of the fourth line as your base point to start copying. Now place them next to your initial vertical line, snapping to its end. Alright, great guys. That brings us to the end of this introduction chapter of setting up our scene. Next chapter we'll dive into modeling the interior.